Hi everyone! So, you're expecting a commentary. I've got bad news. <laughs> My software fucking hates me. Jean's here too, by the way. Say hi. Hi. Oh. Uh, this is my... I mean, it's not really my fault. It's no one's fault. It's my fucking computer's fault. I mean, yeah. I guess it's my fault for not noticing. That's... I want to blame myself, is what I'm saying. Because I feel really bad about this. We had a good commentary where I overanalyzed the doctor saying... The doctor agreeing that being human was optional. <laughs> um, we had good times, like wishing the lonely people at Christmas who are, you know, theoretically uh, listening to our commentaries, um, watching the episodes with us alone on Christmas Day. We want to hug them. I want to hug them. <laughs> and uh, that sentiment still. Yeah, and we were. But, the, but then. And then. We also had the plot holes, we looked at those, but, you, you know, and there was comedy bits, and we, and we liked them. So basically, we had a good commentary, but fuck me, I guess. <laughs> so let's just talk about it instead. Okay, so this will be a worst who review. This is like the last part of a, it's like the worst who without the commentary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They, they've probably, like, seen this and be like, what the hell is this? Why is it, like, only, like, seven minutes long? Yeah, we couldn't stand the first, like, two seconds. Yeah. <laughs> um, it wasn't that Like, bad. closing time. Uh, yeah, no, this is this was good. I, I really enjoyed myself, and uh, I think you did too. Yeah. Unless if you secretly hated it. No, I was surprised. I went into this thinking that it was going to be, you know, meh. Just sort of the Christmas invasion, but more comedy-based. Yeah, and possibly slightly worse. Yeah. Well, it is slightly less good but it's i would rather sit down and watch this though i feel like if there was a day that was like if i had to choose between them i would probably pick this because it's more entertaining i i think i'd rather watch the christmas invasion okay really yeah because like it's it's more drama focused i guess true christmas invasion is more i guess plot driven as opposed to like like this feels like it's more stuff happening and yeah, this is like a party story. Yeah, because... And there's nothing wrong with that. But there is like lots of good bits, you know, like... Yeah. Doctor at a party, you've got that iconic car scene chase. Yeah. The story's just iconic. I, I don't know if I'd go that far. It's not like the most iconic thing, but there's certainly iconic moments in this. Mm. So it's iconic. Obviously, of course, I feel like... <laughs> It feels weird mentioning, as we've already, like, done the commentary, but this also, obviously, done the thing of introducing Donna's character. Yeah. Who, if you didn't know, comes back. If you didn't know this, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. But yeah, I I, th I think this is good. I don't think there's much to speak about, really. Just No, because the thing just... is, when we were watching it, it we were just yeah. sort of, like, picking up on the odd thing here and there. It isn't one of them episodes that... There's so much stuff going on that it's, like, easy to talk about. Yeah, like, the Christmas Invasion had more stuff to talk about, I feel, or it certainly felt yeah. like it. I was trying to speak a lot, but there wasn't much to speak about. It's I even I, I even tried, like, asking Jean who, who, which was hotter, the Rachnos or Cyberwoman. <laughs> yeah. Just because, yeah. The answer was the Cyberwoman. It is the correct answer. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I there mean, is no I, I mean, don't, universe don't where you won't be people. judged. Yeah. yeah. Maybe people are into big red spiders. Yeah. That's disgusting. <laughs> um, also, what was another funny m moment? Like, oh yeah. The, the, the thing in the center... The Earth is basically the moon being an egg. Oh no! Remember? Yeah. But this, it's done right out here, I think. Well, yeah, because it's not ridiculous. Like the moon is an egg. Yeah, no, it's it's. It's where this thing has. Disbelief. Yeah. This thing has became the center of the Earth. Yeah. To lay eggs. Also. The, um. There are two moments that I feel like are basically what I hate about Moffat's Christmas specials, but they're actually done well. Okay. They, or specifically Last Christmas. Um, <laughs> like, I'm not going to hide this, uh, because, like, Donna was explaining the plot as it was 
had just happening but it was meant to be like showing how that she's not the smartest of people all right yeah so it was actually covered up pretty well and it's respecting the audience as most audience members would probably know this shit yeah they've been paying attention but i mean it's yeah. a christmas special so everyone's like everyone's pissed you know people's grandas and stuff are watching it and they're like exactly so <laughs> it's so i get why it's there it's just with moffat it just feels like he's disrespecting the audience yeah also i, I know exactly moffat, what you're on yeah. about in, in last christmas where stuff would happen that was like blatantly obvious and then the 12th doctor would just like break it down and then explain or it just again. any character yeah. <laughs> here it's restricted to one character who we know isn't the smartest and it's self-aware about it that is brought up multiple times which i found surprising like just you're not intelligent you're thick <laughs> just throughout the story yeah but it's meant to say even the dumbest people can be heroes yeah which is great so yeah, basically yeah. Yeah. russell's done a lot of things Together, including a thing that I dislike, but coupled with everything that I do like, you know, he's done a lot of things, and he's just turned it into something great. Yeah. He's a talented writer. Also, another thing, when um, the Doctor, like, took out the, like, fucking game controller. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. You, you, can, you can describe it. It's like a... It's like... <laughs> it's like a golden thing... It is, it's just like a game <laughs> controller that's been spray painted gold and then they put like a big red button on it on an yeah. antenna. Like, oh, it's an alien controller device. Yeah, that you can use drones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, like when he said, it, when Donna was like, oh, where did where could you fit that? And the doctor's like, pockets. They're bigger on the inside. That was good. I liked that. Yeah, because it was a setup and then a payoff. Yeah, because the pockets were set up, right? Yeah. So the it's doing was... multiple things to hide anything that I dislike, but it was delivered mm. and written in such a way where I feel like Russell wasn't being pretentious. Yeah, about yeah, that. it didn't feel smug. It it felt like uh, do you get it? Instead yeah. of <laughs> look it, at it, me, it I'm clever. It wasn't like every time Moffat wrote in Doctor Who into the actual script. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> get it? That's the name of the show. Yeah, it's like, he reused that trope a lot. But, like, specifically, I'm on about, like, when Santa said in Last Christmas, oh, it's bigger on the inside. <laughs> it just felt like... Like, I liked... I, okay, I liked the idea of that line. I just hate how it was yeah. executed on on page and yeah. in the episode. <laughs> But here, it was actually executed well, and it's because, I don't know if it's because Russell did a lot of things on top of, you know, have that line exist, like, you know, set up and have payoffs, hmm. but, you know, it just feels like, you know, he's respecting the audience, in a way. Yeah, I know what you mean. It doesn't feel like... A pretentious shite. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So basically, what I'm saying is Russell good, Stephen bad. Well, I mean, we to be fair, we haven't seen the good, well, the the good Moffat ones yet. I mean, we've seen one that we that we liked. Well, there was one that we liked from start to. Finish. How many? How many have we seen so far? We saw. I'm just gonna count them. Yeah. Just for the just so the viewers. Yeah, so they don't know so which it keeps we're some sort about. of illusion. Yeah. <laughs> One, two, three, four. There are four that we have fully recorded. Okay. I and... only remember three of them. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, I remember the fourth. Yeah. We liked one. We liked, like, half of one. Like, so one of them we liked from start to finish. Yep. One of them we hated from start to finish. <laughs> One of them we were like, there were good elements in here, but fuck no, this was going to sight <clears throat> last Christmas. Uh, and then so much there like was one where we had, it was a roller coaster. Well, I already yeah. mentioned last Christmas, yeah, so I, I feel like I could. 
But like then there was one that was a roller coaster where we it was unwatchable. Yeah. Then it became watchable. Then it became fucking beautiful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You you'll see what it, no, I think the viewers would be able to guess what that is by the time mm. they actually see it. Yeah. Yeah, that one but was weird. That one it. was really hard to I was gonna say about this, I really liked how as I brought up in the commentary, how with um, Russell's era the whole world building and just with extras and stuff just how much that actually helps like set the scene like the amount of like just actors like walking in the street and then like you know they've got the taxi scene yeah you know actual people driving about cars on the motorway and like thinking on all this stuff would have had to have been like fenced off and stuff for the filming but there's just like there's so many people or like when the stars flying over london yeah it he focused on earth but yeah he did it right yeah but it's like he, he has loads of them little moments that just like makes earth feel feel real oh, and also make feels, the threats yeah. feel more genuine because he's got like news reports and stuff like that like all over the world like they're not necessary no but they no, just they help they that help. little bit more they just help like secure the threat if you know what i mean like make it feel like a genuine thing as opposed to there's this thing um, like the part we era didn't really do that but oh yeah but that's that, that felt unit. that felt yeah quite contained though that felt as if it only really affected even though for One. a lot of it it didn't <laughs> yeah but i don't know Pertwee's era has that like thing where it's like it feels so contained to the threat even if yeah. it's not That it's may... weird because, like, you, you think that would just that would just be a thing. That would just be like the because the time. were appearing so. in Unit HQ. Yeah. What would they be appearing elsewhere? Mm. Uh, and also, like, the Green Death wasn't. Well, it wasn't. Well, it was isolated, but not at Unit HQ. So yeah, that, yeah, yeah. That, that actually felt, you know, proper. I watched that one that recently. Actually, no, Green Death actually felt like it could be an RTD story. Uh, yeah. Because it, I, I it did have mean. the extras. Yeah, yeah, it did. But only on the location filming. Studio bound, no. Everyone was a character. In I think it worked. I think it. I think it was. Yeah. It was like the right amount, though. Yeah, it was self-contained, but for a reason because that's what the plot required. It was explicitly self-contained. But then you've you've also got to think of stuff like Spearhead from Space and Silurians. Oh yeah. Those are not contained. <laughs> um, I mean, I mean, there is obviously exceptions to this rule. I just meant generally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I was thinking to think of, of the Perseverance era. It feels like quite contained in its threat. Like even when they go to like a planet or something. <laughs> even yeah. like the Drashigs. There's something that feels like oh, they're just there. I mean, it was contained in the miniscope. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, like Russell's era. Yeah, he really wrapped Russell up Russell knew threat. how to do Earthbound stories, which shows as most of his stories are set on Earth. I feel, like I, it did, only... I feel like it did become a problem after a while, where it's like, oh, they're attacking Earth again, and the whole world is in danger. That did I'm become a little bit of a trope. i of episodes that are very not set on Earth. I'm, I'm thinking... I don't... I, I, planet, I, Satan Pit, and... Uh, Planet of the Ood and Waters of Mars and Planet of the Dead. I think those... So, all of the good ones minus the last one. Utopia, as well, wasn't set on Earth. Hmm. Um, I'm trying to think of others. Um, Uh, Like, well, I mean, we're not counting New Earth Earth because... (laughs) Because, like, remember in the last Quentin Reviews video and he was just like, yeah, Doctor Who has this habit in the Russell Z Davies era when they <laughs> when it was basically just Earth and sure. New Earth <laughs> wait wait listen I'm just gonna think like series 2 <laughs> most of the majority of it is just Earth apart from possible planet Satan Pit and well New Earth yeah series 4 planet of the Ood yeah the library that's not Earth oh yeah the library that's not Earth um, um, I feel like there is another one, but I can't. Actually, maybe there's not. Doctor's Daughter. 
Oh yeah, the forgettable one. Yeah. I get why it's popular and it shouldn't be. Wait, is it popular? I thought it was the one that people hated because I don't. Yeah, hate I well, it. it's popular among people who like stands, like stan accounts. Stans, that are like, yes, because of. Oh, it's David Tennant's wife and also Peter Davison's daughter. Oh, that's. So I bet these people haven't important. seen a single Peter Davison episode in their life. <laughs> what do you mean? I've, they've probably well, seen not, Time no, 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 Crash. No, uh, maybe they might have seen it, but only because David Tennant was in it. Yeah. Can you see my point? <laughs> like, I uh like these are the sort of people I hate. Like I hated, like a few well, years ago, also and because now the Davidson I'm just era like, isn't very good. The Peter David. It's got Come good at moments me, in fans. There. Yeah, there it's is. Got, it's, there's got, like... it's the worst Doctor era of yeah. the classic series. <laughs> That's our hot take. Because there isn't as much good as in the Colin Baker era. Yeah. And the Colin Baker era didn't have much good. <laughs> no. That's the thing. But Colin, Colin ha- saved that. I feel like Colin brought it up. I mean, well, Davison sort of... Davison could have brought it up, but a lot of his stories were just bland. Yeah. Colin's his stories doctor, weren't. His doctor doesn't feel like he has the personality to, like, bring them up. Also, I love he this massive tangent. He does. <laughs> but... I, I know, but, like... He didn't have it. He didn't yeah. have it then. He had it in the caves around Zani. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's annoying. Right, right, but still. I mean, even Peter said, like, <laughs> as he was leaving, he would have stayed on if he got more stories like that. Yeah. But he wouldn't have. He would have had the twin dilemma. But no, tweets, he would have had probably. season 22. Oh, yeah. Season 22 was pretty damn good. Oh, anyways. I was trying to stop this, but then we had, like, a tangent for five minutes. <laughs> yeah. The uh, runaway braid. Th- we both give it a seven. Yeah, yeah, we do. Yeah, better than I thought. Good Christmas special. I'm surprised that we've like gone on for as long as we have. <laughs> it's been like twenty minutes. Well, it's been like seventeen, but yeah, yeah. Okay, bye. Yeah, bye, everyone.